What is the Bible? What is it worth? Basic instructions before leaving earth. Life is full of struggles and it is hard. But we are made in the image of God. Lord, I have to praise you to the moon and back. I don't see anything wrong with that. It's me you help. It's me you kill. It's me you move. It's me you groove. It's me you touch. I love you so much. Oh, my Lord, I have to say thank you. Open your eyes. What do you see? Have you inventoried your life lately? Oh yeah, I have something else to say. Welcome to HBS and DWJ. Oh lordy lordy, to God goes the glory. God goes the glory, the glory, glory. All right, all right. Welcome to HBS and DWJ. Podcast. I am Jerry Joyce, your host. Our mission is to provide the knowledge that will train sisters and brothers in Christ to spread God's love and create disciples. Our vision to share all resources that will aid in the knowledge necessary for the building of God's kingdom. The adversary does not know what to do with those who possess integrity. We are not human beings on a spiritual journey. On the contrary, we are spiritual beings on a human journey. With that being said, we will open this Holy Bible study session up with prayer. So please join in. O Holy Eternal Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it is once again that we come unto you as humble as we know how, realizing that we struggle to see you in this world, full as it is of hurt and ruin. At times, our faith is threadbare, worn almost to a whisper. And yet, we need you more than anything. We need you to remind us that faith is a choice, not a gift you bestow on those who are worthy. Even when the panorama wounds us, we can choose our view. Through the smallest of windows, the ones bright with hope. We can envision ourselves on the rockiest of ledges or preparing for flight to someplace new, green with possibilities. There are times we're afraid that if we take a leap, we'll fall. But it's not up to us, is it? You can do all things that we cannot. You are the open palm waiting to catch us. You are the sturdy bridge to the other side. You have faith even when our faith flounders. All we have to do is walk with you. Thank you for your continued graces and mercies. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, our scripture of the week is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, King James Version. Let's read. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. All right, now this often quoted verse gives a direct definition of faith, meant to be read in the context of the rest of this letter. At the end of the chapter 10, the writer of Hebrews finished describing why the new covenant in Jesus Christ was superior to the old covenant of animal sacrifices. And that's all in accordance to Hebrews chapter 10 verses 1 through 18. And uh, this concluded with a reassuring reminder not to shrink back, but to have faith. According to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 39. All right, now the definition given here is meant to tie this command to the examples given later on all right um now as we move on after this verse the uh, writer will explain how the actions of various biblical figures proved both the existence and the uh, validity of their faith and uh, those contexts former evidence and future expectation are essential when uh Um, interpreting the uh, uh, meaning of these words. 
All right, now in the following verses, the writer of Hebrews will point out examples of believers who demonstrated real saving faith in God. And each example of, uh, of faith demonstrates trust based on what the person knew and held as reassurance that God would act according to his promises. All right, now the assurance and conviction of faith is not blind belief or gullibility or wishful thinking. Study of the various characters mentioned in this chapter shows that they all had good reasons to trust in God, and their faith was not naively accepting fairy tales. It was acting in full confidence that God would do as he had promised based on those experiences. And uh, as the rest of this chapter demonstrates, that kind of faith, trust which produces obedience, results in God's blessings and approval. All right, now, our perspective, looking back on their example, should inspire confidence that God will make good on his promises, even if our earthly lives doesn't last long enough to see them come to fruition. God creates out of things we cannot see, both in a literal, physical sense, as well as a spiritual sense. Just because we don't understand how God will act does not mean he cannot or will not act. All right. Our topic today is Sarai's suggestion, unbelief actions. All right. Now, Genesis chapter 16 continues to follow the life of one of Israel's greatest patriarchs, Abram, who will soon be renamed Abraham. To this point... Abram and his wife Sarai are still childless. Despite Abram being well over 75 years old, and this is in accordance to um, Genesis chapter 12, verse 4. All right. In fact, at this point in the narrative, Abram is pushing 90, according to Genesis chapter 16, verse 16. In the prior chapter, Abram has voiced his concerns to God about the situation, and God has responded with a dramatic demonstration of his intentions. For all these many years, Abram has resisted following the normal practices of his day. Abram and Sarai were wealthy. They had many servants. Abram could have taken many wives. He chose instead to wait for God to fulfill the promise of children through his barren wife, Sarah. Until now, in the previous chapter, the Lord had directly promised Abram that his heir would be his own flesh and blood. And that's in accordance to Genesis chapter 15, verse 4. Abram would have a son and not merely a servant as his heir. That specific promise does not seem to have been given to Sarah, Abram's wife. At the very least, she does not seem to trust God's work in the situation. It's also possible that she doubted that uh, Abram's heir was meant to be born through her. In any case, it had not happened yet. And the ticking of the clock must have sounded quite loud as Abram was now well into his 80s and she in her 70s. Sarai has an idea to help the plot along, however. With Abram in his mid-80s, Sarai has apparently become tired of waiting. In her eyes, it is time to go to Plan B, giving her Egyptian girl Hagar to Ab Abram in uh, order to finally obtain a child. All right, um... Hagar was Sarai's servant or slave girl. Slavery in this era was vastly different from what modern people picture. A closer term for today's world might be an indentured servant. Now, this was a one-sided arrangement, to be sure, but the relationship, as seen in the following verses, was not as simplistic as slave to master. It's possible that Sarai took possession of Hagar, an Egyptian, when Sarai had been taken by the Pharaoh for his wife. In Genesis chapter 12, verses 10 through 20, Sarai proposes her alternative plan to provide Abram an heir in the following verse. Interestingly, 
Sarai holds the Lord responsible for her inability to bear children. In her mind, he is the one preventing this from happening. As a matter of fact, God may have been doing exactly that. Executing his plan for their lives in his own timing. Sarai, though, didn't want to wait any longer to see what would happen. Her plan may well have been a normal custom in the culture of their day. If a wife could not bear a child herself, she could assign the role to a servant who would become another wife to the husband. If the servant became pregnant, the child would still belong to the first wife, as the servant was her property. As repulsive as that may sound to our modern ears, it was the way of that time and the way of their day. All right, now, and the slavery of that era was was very different from uh, the brutality modern readers assume when they encounter that word. Still, this must not have been something Abram had ever chosen to do before. He had countless servants. He surely could have had any number of wives. And yet, to this point, Abram had remained committed to seeing God's promise fulfilled through Sarai and no other woman. He was a faithful man. Now, however, he allows Sarai to convince him to try it. I wonder how hard did she try to convince him. Hmm? Oh, well, let me go on. It will become clear that this is not the way God intends to build his covenant people. Apparently, if a wife was unable to bear children, it was considered appropriate for her to give her servant to her husband as another wife. With the understanding that any children born to uh, to that servant would rightfully become the child of the original wife. Either way, this is a plan born out of desperation. The end results will be unfortunate, but not unexpected, according to Genesis chapter 16, verses 7 through 12. It has been a full decade since the initial promise, and Sarai is still barren. All right, now, Abram... um, Well, by Abram and Sarai's way of thinking, it is time for them to help God's plan along. And they want for themselves what God wants for them. They just don't want to wait for him to give it to them in the traditional way. So they don't. They don't wait. In a disappointing moment of faithfulness, Abram agrees. Okay. Hagar becomes Abram's second wife. And she quickly becomes pregnant with his son. Pew! This is something which had not happened for Sarai in her entire life with Abram, including the ten years in Canaan after God's latest promise of an heir in Genesis chapter 16 verse 3. Then the plan unravels. Hagar elevated from slave to wife and now to birth mother? She begins to treat her mistress, Sarah, with contempt. Perhaps Hagar wondered what she and Abram needed with Sarah. Perhaps she resented resented the idea that her child would belong to Sarah. In any case, the dynamic changes very quickly. However, this immediate pregnancy complicates Abram's family life. Hagar, now wife of Abram and bearer of his only child, begins to resent the woman who will claim that child as her own. Hagar may have wondered what she and Abram even needed Sarai for anymore. If Hagar could give him children, wasn't Sarai unnecessary? Hmm, what we need you for, Sarai? Also, in that culture, barrenness was considered a sign of a defect, even divine disapproval. The fact that Hagar could immediately conceive when Sarah could not after years and years might have been something that tempted Hagar to see herself as superior to her master. 
However, it was motivated. Sarai feels Hagar's contempt, and it wounds her deeply, as the following verses will reveal. What Sarai seems to have failed to anticipate was Hagar growing contemptuous of her, perhaps with good reason. Hagar would not relish the idea of giving up her child to Sarai and remaining the servant. She was Abram's wife too, after all. Also, in that culture, a woman's fertility was seen as a sign of her worth. So Hagar's ability to conceive immediately for Abram, when Sarai had been childless for decades, could have been a source of pride or contempt for Hagar. Regardless of her reasons or how Hagar might have acted, this contempt was not lost on Sarai. Wounded by Hagar's attitude, Sarai complains to Abram. Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. Her speech suggests she held him responsible for what had happened. In truth, though, the plan was Sarai's idea, according to Genesis chapter 16, verse 2. Abram was responsible. He approved of the plan, and he allowed it to happen. Okay, and he followed through with it. It was his responsibility to declare whether or not Sarai retained her authority over Hagar. It's interesting to note that Sarai invokes the Lord's name in her angry plea to Abram. She calls on God to be the ultimate judge in this matter, going over Abram's head, in a sense. Do you have the complexion for the protection? It is now time for our life reflection. All right. Sarai gave Hagar to Abram as a servant wife, a common practice of that time. A married woman who could not have children was shamed by her peers and would often give a female servant to her husband in order to produce heirs. The children born to the servant woman were considered the children of the wife. Abram and Sarai were acting in line with the custom of that day, but their actions showed a lack of faith that God would fulfill his promise. Sarai took matters into her own hands by giving Hagar to Abram. Like Abram, she had trouble believing God's promise, which was apparently directly directed specifically toward Abram and Sarai. Now, out of this lack of faith came a series of problems. This invariably happens when we take over for God, trying to make his promise come true through efforts that are not in line with his specific directions. In this case, time was the greatest test of Abram and Sarai's willingness to let God work in their lives. Sometimes we too must simply wait. When we ask God for something and have to wait, we can be tempted to take matters into our own hands and interfere with God's plans. Although Sarai had arranged for Hagar to have a child by Abram, she later blamed Abram for the results. It is often easier to strike out in frustration and accuse someone else than to admit an error and ask for forgiveness. Adam and Eve, they did the same thing in Genesis chapter 3 verses 12 through 13. Check this out, out, out. All right. If you happen to find yourself wanting to support a minority business, try Natemia. After the birth of their second daughter, Diana and her husband co-founded Natemia. Their goal was to help make buying natural baby products easier for parents. That's why the Natemia team tests out products before they offer them on the site. Natemia sells hooded towels, ponchos, washcloths, and bathing sets for your little bundle of joy. You can find this business online at Natemia on Amazon.com. That's Natemia on Amazon.com. Hey, bro. What time is it, man?
It's now time to answer comments from HBS and DWJ website. All right. Give me that holler. Come on. Holler. There you go. Now, let's start with Pasendu Dementka. Pasendu Dementka says, I found your Bible study on Genesis chapter 16 to be enlightening. The story of Hagar and Sarai offers valuable lessons on trust and God's faithfulness. Have you encountered other passages that similarly emphasize the importance of patience and faith in God's plan? Hmm. Personally, I've drawn inspiration from stories like Joseph's in Genesis, where adversity ultimately led to greater blessings. Your analysis of Hagar's perspective adds depth to the narrative. It's a reminder that each character in the Bible plays a uh, unique role in God's larger plan. How do you think modern readers can apply Hagar's resilience and trust in their own lives, huh? Your insights would be greatly appreciated. Thank you for sharing this thoughtful study. All right. Hello, Pasendu. I appreciate you taking the time to let me know that you feel that this Bible study on Genesis chapter 16 is enlightening. All right. Now, according to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, King James Version, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Alright. And according to Romans chapter 12, verse 12, King James Version. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. Alright, now these are a couple of passages that similarly uh, emphasize the importance of patience and faith in God's plan, in my opinion. Modern readers can apply Hagar's resilience and trust in their own lives through constant prayer, belief, fasting, scripture study, and focusing on God without ceasing. So, thank you for appreciating my insights, and you are most certainly welcome for the sharing of this thoughtful study. And, blessings, my friend. All right, now let's move on to Blaze J777. Blaze J777 says, Hi there, and thanks for sharing this interesting article. I also study the Bible, and you have shared very interesting and important messages from the book of Genesis. Abram was chosen by God, and he was faithful. But because of Sarai, his wife, he decided to take Hagar as his wife and obtain a child from her. But everything was planned by God. In Brit Hadasha, New Testament, we can uh, read that Abram believed in God's word and he was called a friend of God. God's plan was to create two great nations, Israelites and Arabs. They come from Ishmael. Two nations who will be completely separated. In the next generation, we can see similar uh, story as his son Itzhak or Isaac had two sons as well, Esau and Jacob. So I guess that should be Isaac, but it's spelled I-Z-A-A-K. So it must be pronounced Isaac that way as well. And... uh then he has it spelled as I-T-Z-H-A-K. But the only ones who were the, but the only one who was chosen by God, the second one, Ishmael and Esau, became an enemy of his brother. Today we have the same situation. Children of Adonai who follow his word and his son Yeshua, the Messiah Jesus, and the children of the devil. What? Good and evil. All the time in our history from Adam and Eve and their sons Cain and Abel till today's world where we have people who love and keep his commandments and the second group. People who rebel against God, his son Yeshua and his commandments. Praise Yeshua. Hallelujah. All the best for you. 
All right. Um. Hello, uh, Blaze J Triple Seven. Thank you for stopping by and considering this sharing of this article. Interesting. Um. Thank you for adding value to this HBS and DWJ platform with uh the information you study as well. Um. Well, your opinion on this topic is very much appreciated, and all the best to you and blessings to you, my friend. All right, let's move on to Gina. Gina says, Sarai's suggestion is a thought-provoking and significant chapter in the biblical narrative of Abraham and Sarai. This study appreciates the depth and complexity of the story, highlighting the human imperfections and the underlying themes of faith, trust, and God's plan. The final section underscores the significance of this chapter in the broader biblical narrative, emphasizing the consequences of self-will and the importance of patience in God's timing. Overall, Sarai's suggestion is a story that offers valuable insights into the human condition, faith, and God's plan. The review successfully captures the depth and intricacies of the narrative, making it a compelling and thought-provoking read. All right. Hello, Gina. Um, Thanks for stopping by, and since you like it so much, thank you for continuing to stop by in advance, adding value to this HBS and DWJ platform. Your opinion on this topic, as well as all of the others you will comment on, hint, hint, is very much appreciated, and blessings to you, my friend. All right, let's move on to Alvaro Raimundo. Alvaro Raimundo says, This post on Genesis chapter 16 personally helped me grow closer to God. It reminded me to stay faithful to God and trust his plan. Hagar's point of view is insightful, as it shows how he played a massive role in God's plan. Having Hagar's resilience is what a lot of us should practice to have. I see how God chose him to follow his enormous plan. Huh. Okay. Um, hello there, Alvaro. Um, thank you for stopping by and considering Sarah's suggestion, unbelief actions, and insightful point of view. I often pray to God for understanding during my Holy Bible study sessions, and I find that doing so in turn it helps me to grow closer to god so thank you for commenting on um this episode of hbs and dwj and blessings my friend all right let's move on to stefan ivanov stefan ivanov says man i didn't expect to stumble on this story again and after reading it i felt something deep again i think the foundation play that we see in real life movies teachers between a man and a woman it's so cultivating the need to have it all even after you got a promise for it patience pay off if you follow the words of God which is similar to a personal goal in this case a family goal and as the beginning of mankind on earth with Adam and Eve this one got ruined the woman proposed a way out And the man didn't refuse and played along. A forbidding fruit in the face of a younger, fertile woman or your promise given to your wife. Breaking the chains of the family also broke his name. So Abram now has to wander for ten years in Canaan. Where, if I remember right, it's not cool. There is rape, robbery, etc. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is from memory. I feel... The Genesis stories are a strong read for organizing your personal life, and I like the topic on it. Hello, Stefan uh, Ivanov. Uh, well, first, uh, I would like really to have some scripture on what what you were uh, talking about because um, I'm not familiar with what you were saying. So, uh, if you can give some scripture on that, then I can look at it and take a peek for you. See, uh, see, you you know, what what my opinion on it uh, or or what revelation I receive from it, okay? Um, But I do want to thank you for stopping by and uh, commenting on Sarah's suggestions, unbelief actions. And I definitely agree that God's, uh, well, that 
the the Genesis stories are a strong read for organizing your personal life. All right, now, uh, as far as I know, your comment was stated, you know, pretty good. I mean, but I'd like to have scripture to follow up, you know. But uh, anyway, I want to thank you again for your time and blessings, my friend. All right. But for now, that's what the uh, what uh, Sarah's suggestions, unbelief actions is all about. And uh, with that being said, we will close out with prayer. All right. O Holy Eternal Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We want to thank you for your continued graces and mercy. We ask that you forgive us for those things that we have done, thought, and said that are not pleasing to you. Strengthen us to learn to how to listen through our spiritual ears and to hear you so we don't miss what you are speaking to us and through us. Please help us to spread the good news of the gospel and not the bad news of gossip. It is always in the precious name of the precious bridegroom, Jesus the Christ and Messiah, we pray. Amen. All right. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, thank you all for your support. HBS and DWJ is eternally grateful. Please stay tuned for other discussions of the show. And you can message HBS and DWJ at 704-412-8692. That is 704-412-8692. I would like to thank iHeartRadio for this opportunity. And you can find HBS and DWJ podcast most anywhere you receive your podcast. You can also find HBS and DWJ on our website at GodInOurLivesEveryday.com. That's GodInOurLivesEveryday.com. Or just hashtag HBS and DWJ. That's hashtag HBS and DWJ. Don't forget to check the HBS and DWJ store out on GodInOurLivesEveryday.com. And you can also find us on Facebook at HBS and DWJ. All right, remember to put God first and everything else will follow. Appreciate your steps in life. They are the reason you can look back at where you came from. Why? I, I, because to God goes the glory, the glory, glory.